In this video, on a crowded Florida street, something intense happens as a man named Brandon Loner holds onto a one-year-old, using the child to protect himself from the police. Cameras on officers record the tense moments as they attempt to intervene. Leona drives recklessly through traffic with the child on his lap. Loud sirens blare, and bystanders shout at him to stop and let go of the child. Put the baby down! Put the kid down! Put the kid down! Give us the air! Put the kid down! Dude. Ignoring commands to stop, he leads officers on a perilous chase until cornered near a fast food joint. Refusing to let go of the child, Leona faces off with deputies. Despite a taser and even a police dog, he fights fiercely. Stop, Stop dude! In a swift move, an officer rescues the terrified child from Leona's grasp, providing solace in the turmoil. Yet the struggle continues as officers work to subdue Leona. As the sun set over downtown Seattle on October 30th, 2023, things went wild. Someone urgently called for help, saying something bad was happening on 3rd Avenue and James Street. A man, unnoticed at first, suddenly lashed out, striking a passerby with brutal force. Let's see what you hey, sit here. I need to talk to you real quick. Let's go, let's go. I like this. This Come is on. you. Ah! Hey, go hey. On, let's go. Quickly, the police rushed to the spot. The suspect, showing defiance and aggression, faced them squarely, making their intentions clear and worrying. With their hearts racing, he ran away into the dark, but they caught him not far from there. On the ground! On the ground! On the ground! On the ground! On the ground. On the ground. To get tased. About to get tased! During the fight to control him, the suspect hurt two officers before they could stop him. In the middle of the confusion, the suspect also got injured, showing how serious the situation was. As the dust settled, emergency services tended to the injured, the suspect taken to Harborview Medical Center for treatment, while the victims refused medical aid. Behind bars, the suspect awaited interrogation, his motives shrouded in mystery. In this video from Atlanta, police rushed to save a kidnapped child. The nine-year-old boy was found sitting innocently in a stolen car, sparking a frantic search. When Miss Jerrica Moore called for help, officers acted quickly to bring the mother and son back together. There, you're not talking about it's right there, I'm gonna go look. <laughs> but the person who took the child, Darius White, proved hard to catch, making the chase even more tense. Throughout the video, we see police working together, making every moment more suspenseful. Show me your hands! Show me your hands! Get the out the door! Get the off of your door! And finally, the big moment arrives. White is caught, and the child is safe. White now faces serious charges, showing how serious his actions were. This officer shares story of rescue during SWAT situation. During a scary situation in Greeley, Officer Steve Perkins bravely confronted a person with a gun. While the armed person was angry, Perkins noticed two children stuck upstairs. He quietly asked for help from the SWAT team and got a ladder to help the kids escape safely. A hostage situation that happened just two weeks ago. Don't come up here! Don't! Don't come up here! He has a gun in his hand. A situation all caught on body cam. Hunker down. He kept the armed person busy while ensuring the children's safety. Perkins praised the teamwork and training that helped save lives even rescuing a dog. But the response became more urgent when Perkins spotted two children waiting for help. We looked up and saw there were two kids on a second story window. Open your window. Can you push the screen out? Sadly, the armed person took his own life. Perkins admired the brave kids who stayed calm and sought help. This is a story of bravery during danger, showing how kids can be heroes and how dedicated police officers are. Secured the room. We had to move really quick because that distraction was very effective at that moment, but it may not be if we continued to have to wait. The kids were really brave. A tense moment begins as a stolen Toyota Corolla speeds through the parking lot, trying to escape from the police. The sergeant, captured on body cam, bravely chases after the car with his gun drawn, urging the driver to stop. Suddenly, the stolen car accelerates and crashes into the sergeant. 
Shots are fired as he tries to defend himself, but the car manages to get away, leaving behind confusion and disorder. Police rush to help the injured sergeant and catch the suspect. Stop the car! Stop the car! The police arrested Graham and helped her until the medical team arrived. She was taken to Riverside Methodist Hospital in serious condition, according to Albert. The police mentioned that the people in the two cars Graham hit were treated at the spot for minor injuries. Or we're going to need some intersection shut down. In a chilling revelation, Derbyshire police have unearthed bone-chilling footage. It was about the arrest of Damien Bendel, the perpetrator of a heinous crime that shook the county of Kilmarsh, Sheffield. Mate, have you got anything on you that you shouldn't have? No, there's no weapons or nothing. Right, right do you just want to undo your coat? Have you, have, have, you, have you armed yourself? Yeah. You have. have. You, have, you got a, have you the scene starts gradually, revealing the horror behind closed doors. Damien, a name now synonymous with terror, confessed to a police officer about the unimaginable. Four lives were mercilessly taken. Terry, pregnant and hopeful. Her children, Lacey and John Paul, and their innocent friend, Connie. Some stab wounds to his chest. They're not oozing blood, but he's saying that uh, his family are inside and that he believes he has murdered them. But the horror doesn't end there. Damien's confession unveils a darker truth. He also admitted to taking advantage of Lacey, his partner's daughter. He was taken into custody after that. 47 hours, mercy on suspicion of murder. You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence. Do not mention when questioned something like relying on in court, and if you do say it may be given in evidence. In Port St. Lucie, Florida, a traffic stop got dangerous when 19-year-old Dylan Morgan did something risky. He caught the officer's notice because of his dark car windows and loud muffler. Officers pulled over 19-year-old Dylan Morgan. He allegedly had a tinted windshield and taillights, as well as a loud muffler, according to a report. If you're honest with me, I will work. Morgan seemed nervous as he tried to explain himself. Eventually, he gave in and handed over a bag of marijuana. But things got worse when he didn't follow orders. Suddenly, everything turned chaotic. The officer got pulled along in a dangerous ride and got some minor injuries. Sir, he was afraid of police. When asked if he had anything on him, he handed over a bag of marijuana. But that's when cops say he stopped complying. Even though Morgan tried to run away, he couldn't escape justice. Now, he's dealing with charges for hurting the officer and having drugs. What will happen to him? Will he get away with it, or will he face the consequences? Hop on out for me now. You don't have a choice. Police say the officer was... In this thrilling pursuit through the busy streets of Atlanta, watch as police chase down a suspect wanted for a deadly shooting. Follow along as the officers navigate through narrow alleys, feeling the tension rise with every corner they turn. I just put a picture in the chat as well. Suddenly, they spot the suspect at a gas station, and the rush of adrenaline kicks in. Chill, 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 chill. Let me get on my back. 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 Let me get on my back, bro. Let me get on my back. With determination pulsing through them, they swiftly apprehend the 21-year-old suspect, Cameron Deal, who faces charges of murder, aggravated assault, and illegal possession of a firearm. In Florida, something scary happened. Police in Titusville arrested a man named Benjamin Hoven from Tallahassee for terrible crimes. It all started when a police officer noticed Hovan filling up a stolen car at a gas station. Hovan got scared and ran away, which led to a big chase. It turns out he did some really bad things. Police were searching for Hovan in connection with a Saturday home invasion, rape and kidnapping in Castleberry, about an hour away. He even scared the two women with a knife. Luckily, they managed to escape, and the police caught Hoven before he could do more harm. In a calm Florida neighborhood, a 14-year-old boy's actions led to chaos. People called for help when they saw him with a gun, and he had also just shot his mother. 
I don't want to hurt you, bro. I do not want to shoot you. Put it down. You don't want to end it this way. You don't want to end it this way, brother. I promise you. Whatever happened today, it can be fixed. Police came and found the boy upset, holding the gun and threatening to kill himself. They talked to him nervously until he put the gun down. But when he tried to grab it again, they had to act quickly. Listen to me. I'm going to have you lay down on the ground and my gun is going in my, my holster. I promise you. If you will walk toward me, keep your hands up, Hadim. Keep your hands up. Don't go back to work. Later, they found someone dead in a driveway nearby. One person was badly hurt, and another lost their life. It's a sad and troubling story. If you'll walk out to me with your hands up in the air, when you get to about right here, I'm going to have you lay down on the ground. My gun is going in the holster. Bet that. It's going in. In the quiet evening of Sumter County, Florida, chaos suddenly broke loose. People called the sheriff's office in a panic, reporting gunshots on one, 75 NB. A man named Miguel Espinosa Navarro caused terror from his black Ford truck, swerving dangerously through traffic with a gun. Put your hands up! Put your hands up! Taser. Come on. Get out! Near Bushnell, he crashed into a vehicle but kept going. Deputies closed in on him and he crashed again, this time into a guardrail, leading to a tense standoff. Get out! Get out of the ground! Suddenly he threw his weapon and ran, but his escape didn't last long. In a thrilling chase, deputies caught him, putting an end to the frightening situation without anyone getting hurt. Guns! Uh, Alright, if you got a long uh, rifle, get off of I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Come on! Put your hands up! One calm evening in Sumter County, Florida, everything suddenly turned chaotic. People started calling the sheriff's office, reporting gunshots on the northbound lane of Interstate 75. Control, George, 635. 416 Western High School, East Parking Lot. A man named Miguel Espinosa Navarro was causing terror, driving his black Ford truck recklessly through traffic and holding a gun. Near Bushnell, he crashed into another vehicle but didn't stop. When deputies approached, he crashed again, this time hitting the guardrail, and there was a tense moment as they faced off. Stop the car! Stop the car! Stop! George, six, three, five, shots fired! Shots fired! Then, he threw his weapon and ran, but his attempt to escape didn't last long. After a dramatic chase, deputies caught him, bringing an end to the frightening situation without anyone getting hurt. In a surprising event at an Atlanta hospital, a man started shooting, killing a woman and injuring four others. The chaos began when Dion Patterson, 24, became violent while waiting for an appointment. He fled the scene, stealing a truck and disappearing. A search for him followed, with sightings reported in Cobb County. After eight intense hours, an undercover officer arrested Patterson. Bring, bring this up, bring this up. Hey, keep your hands up. Hey, I got left. The injured victims, including CDC employee Amy St. Pierre, were quickly taken to the hospital. Patterson's family shared that he struggled with mental illness, helping to explain the tragic events. A man named David Wilson, who worked as a roofer and lived with his mom, kept a troubling secret. His harmless internet habits took a dark turn. He deceived more than 500 boys into sending him indecent pictures. In August of 2017, the phone used to commit some of the offences was hidden in his bedroom, but believe it or not, even though they had all this evidence, he would go on to be bailed as... It it's shocking to think that he reached out to 5,000 boys worldwide, but he didn't escape the consequences. Recently, Judge Rupert Overbury at Ipswich Crown Court sentenced him. Wilson, now known as a serial paedophile, is looking at 25 years in prison. So, moment, okay, you are under arrest for the following offences. I need you to listen to the offences, okay? I'm going to go through them. Right. Causing or inciting a child under 13 years of age to engage in sex. In May, a man claimed to have a bomb and threatened to take it to Western Favel Police Station during a 999 call. Okay, 
Officers swiftly engaged with him to gain his trust and resolve the situation safely. They convinced him to put down the bag he claimed had a bomb. Drop the bag, mate, and we can talk to you. What's in the bag? A bomb. Fortunately, it turned out to be a hoax and no one was harmed. Last month, the man was sentenced to three years in jail for his false claim and actions. Get the bag off him. Get the bag off him. Right. Get him on the floor. Lay on your front, Jay. Something really intense happened in downtown Kalamazoo. Police body camera footage captures the tension at a homeless camp protest. Among the eight protesters arrested, Monica Washington Padula stands out. She got herself into serious trouble. At first, everything seemed calm, but then things went crazy. Detectives said Washington Padula struck a KDPS sergeant with a flagpole and Pepper sprayed a second officer, causing temporary blindness. Washington Padula said she was also hurt as a result of chemical irritants used by police. On your porch with short gray hair. Who put her hands on me first? Who was she? Who was she? Excuse me, I need medical attention. I need medical Washington Padula ended up with some serious charges including assault and resisting arrest. Who was the officer that assaulted me? Who was the officer that assaulted me? Who was the lady? In an intense video from Ohio police cameras, suspects engage in a thrilling chase during a tense drug bust in Illyria. Brandon Sherrill runs into a house, setting off a series of events. Get your, get your leg out! Get out. Initially, four suspects, Stephanie, Michael, Autumn, Jason and Cheryl are caught, but the drama doesn't stop there. Ian and Michael are accused of drug crimes. The tension builds as officers find McCloskey hiding in a clothes dryer, caught on camera in a heart-pounding moment. Let's just stand up for me. Police identified the man in the dryer as Michael McCloskey. Jason Smith was the one found under blankets, Stephanie Price in the attic, and Brandon... Sh the police seize fentanyl, cocaine, methamphetamine, marijuana and more drugs, along with related items. The Illyria Police Department praises its officers for acting quickly and making the community safer. No, come out. Cheryl. As the U-Haul truck drove through the quiet woods of Akron, Ohio, the driver was shocked by what he saw. Two men were tied up and unable to speak, lying still on the ground. Some, some sort of injury in this area. Yeah. I don't see injury on him though. But this wasn't the end of the unsettling discovery. In another part of Copley, Ohio, another body was found. An Akron police officer, recording with a body camera, uncovered disturbing details. A victim who seemed to have been shot and had their throat cut. Um, she thought they were like mannequins. Yeah, do, do um, does anyone from DP want to come talk to her? Yeah, hold on one second. Okay. The officer reported the grim scene over the radio suggesting a dark story was unfolding. The video from police cameras shows neighbors reacting to the discovery of three men who were tied up, silenced, and killed. You know, turn turn my head because too many people yeah. do that nowadays. Well, you're not, you know, you know, what's the chances that that's what that would be, you know? Right, right. In Albuquerque, New Mexico, there was a scary situation when police dealt with Francisco Matias, who was high on drugs and had hurt his family. <laughs> A standoff? Hot Police had their guns out and asked him to put down his weapon, but he didn't listen, and shots were fired when he lifted his gun. Luckily, a friend stepped in and got rid of the gun. The police chased Machias through backyards and over fences, telling him to give up. Drop the gun! Drop, Drop it! it. Do it now! Put the gun on the ground! Put the gun on the ground! Good, good, good! Body camera video shows officials calling for Macias to drop. But then, Macias took someone as a hostage. Even though they tried to stop him using a taser, the situation only ended when Macias got hurt and faced serious charges. You can see everything that happened on the police body camera footage. They tase him. <laughs> Once upon a time, during a regular flight to Hartsfield Jackson International Airport, something unusual happened. A passenger found his bag missing when he landed. 
Inside were valuable belongings and even military gear. But the passenger had a secret weapon, a hidden GPS tracker. The police followed the bag's journey, which took them on a thrilling ride. It disappeared on a martyr train, but miraculously reappeared at the airport. With body cam footage, the officers caught the thief red-handed. The guy believed to have taken luggage already had a criminal trespass warning from Hartsfield Jackson Airport on August 13th, 2021. Found bags. That's what you found. You got you Where'd you get that bag from? I bought it from someone. Oh, no, we got you on you camera did? taking it off the carousel. You did? You bought that? The criminal one? Now the police are charging him with stealing stuff, two counts, and taking luggage or freight from the terminal, two counts. The APD mentioned that he's been sent to Fulton County Jail. On July 19th, 2020, as people left the plane, tension brewed silently. Then suddenly, a big commotion erupted at the baggage claim. The brutal battle all being captured on body cams. A fight broke out, and it was caught on camera. The police attention was called almost immediately. It's unclear how it all began, but it seems like it might have started on the plane and got worse when they landed. In the middle of the chaos, a police officer tried to calm everyone down, saying they should all stop. Eventually, six women were arrested. Hey, 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 stop, stop, stop. Hey, 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 hey. This disturbing video from police cameras on the 26th of May 2021 shows the moment when armed officers arrested a man for killing his grandmother at her home in Cornwall. The man, Cameron Dancy Stevenson, 27, entered 62-year-old Alison Stevenson's house on May 25th, 2021, and stabbed her while she was in bed. To your side! Get it out by your side! Okay, sorry, I, I, got, I, I don't understand. Obviously, I'm doing as you say. Off one arm. Before this incident, Dancy Stevenson had been ordered by the court not to contact Stevenson due to previous violent behavior. What? You are no, arrested no, no, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm on really suspicion sorry. of murder. You do not have to say anything, but it may oh, harm your defense oh oh, if you oh, do oh, not oh, mention oh, when- Although Dancy Stevenson claimed innocence, a jury found him guilty after a trial. He has been sentenced to a minimum of 18 years in prison. The scene unfolds with a sense of gravity as officers from Kent Police stand before a man their purpose evident in their solemn expressions. They look serious, showing they mean business. The man is clearly shocked when they tell him why they're there, to talk about the murders of Wendy Nell and Caroline Pierce back in 1987. A police officer tells David something shocking about a case from a long time ago. David is stunned as he takes in the news. Suddenly, he's taken into custody for murders that happened many years ago. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention, when questioned, something which you later on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. You are being arrested. The police search his house very carefully, finding hidden computer files with strange codes on them. Each discovery makes the mystery even more complex, suggesting David might be more involved than anyone thought. Number 28, born, died, hasn't got a date, photo, In a quiet part of Gwinnett County, Georgia, something sinister happened. It started small, but by 2.40 p.m. on February 26th, everything went crazy, and this made the peaceful street suddenly become a battlefield for cops. Pit, 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 pit successful. A car got stolen, someone was forced out of their car, and a gunshot was heard all mixed up in a mess of crime. Police chased the suspects through twisty roads, which had the suspects driving like they were invisible. Then, a big moment. The cops made a move and stopped the fleeing car. The suspects, James and Dondry, ran away on foot. There's a lady on foot, there's a lady on foot. After a foot pursuit, both suspects were caught and are now in jail. James faces charges including fleeing from police, reckless driving, 
possessing a stolen firearm, hit and run, and drug possession. Daundry faces charges for obstructing law enforcement and drug possession. Both also face extra charges from a previous incident. We got both. Yeah, they're on the way back. Body cam footage reveals a gripping moment as LMPD officers make a startling discovery during an arrest. Stay right there. Officer Berber spots a girl in a car, triggering a tense rescue. Sergeant Keeling swiftly detains suspect Robbie Wilt, commanding him to surrender. The atmosphere crackles with suspense as Wilt complies, kneeling in surrender. Passenger door! Open the passenger door! Driver passenger. Meanwhile, officers secure the area, prioritizing the girl's safety. Every second counts as they meticulously check the car for any hidden dangers. Hello. Hey. It's okay. Come here. It's okay. Oh my God. On the 24th of February, 2023, in downtown Atlanta, cops on a routine drug bus stumble upon more than they bargained for. Thanks. Honey from North Face went to that other dude with the short dreads, too. He's got it in his hand. As they move in, a suspect flings drugs to the ground. But it's what they don't see that shocks them. But there's a startling surprise hidden. One of them is wanted for murder. I see that crack right there. Get on the plane. Part two, after him. But that's not all. With hearts racing, officers uncover warrants for narcotics and burglary. Clues suggest a deeper, darker plan. As they arrest the suspects, the full scale of their operation becomes clear. It squeezes down and fits off. On May 2nd, 2023, a bullet was found inside the high school cafeteria. Pepper Pike Police Department released body camera footage of the arrest of 18-year-old Nolan Rosen, a student at Orange High School. He's accused of bringing a gun and bullets onto campus. Yeah, but it like, it's not like I'm planning anything. Tonight, Pepper Pike Police body camera video shows 18-year-old Nolan Rosen admit to bringing a bullet into Orange High School. Rosen admitted to having a bullet, but denied bringing a gun into the school. After finding a bullet in the school on May 2nd, Rosen faced charges of possessing a weapon in a school safety zone and causing panic. Police later discovered a .22 caliber rifle and ammunition in Rosen's car parked at the school. Three bullets were brought into the school. I don't bring the rifle because I'm like assuming I'm going to have to use it. I just bring it because, first of all, it looks cool. And second of all, it's like the comfort thing. It's so cool. It's like when I have it, you feel... Despite Rosen's insistence that he meant no harm, he faces serious charges. He's currently out on bond and awaiting his arraignment on July 5th. If convicted, he could serve over a year in prison. With the gun. Is there a gun in your car right now? Yeah. Police officers walk to the parking lot and find a 22 caliber rifle sitting in the back seat with additional ammunition. Officers in Atlanta race through the streets in the dead of night in pursuit of a man who was suspected of many killings. Officers spotted the 2010 Ford Crown Victoria around Fairburn Road SW. When they tried to stop the car, police say the driver, Jadarius Carr, ditched the vehicle at a nearby gas station and took off running. As they closed in, the suspect, Jadarius Carr, made a daring escape, abandoning his car and fleeing into the darkness. There was a tense chase through the playground's shadows. Get on the ground! Get on the ground! On the ground, now! On the ground! On the ground! I'm gonna tase you! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! When the cops finally cornered Carr, his desperate escape was put to an end. Authorities confirmed the threat he posed by finding a terrifying weapon in his possession upon his detention. Another chapter closed, thanks to the brave vigilance of Atlanta's finest. Come my car legit. Everything gonna be legit. I don't got nothing illegal on me. Everything legit. Once a plumber in London, Khalid Ali disappeared for years, only to reappear armed and dangerous. Crafting bombs for the Taliban in a hidden Afghan camp, he slipped back into the UK unnoticed. But his scary plan was discovered when he was caught near Parliament with knives and dangerous intentions. Played him, mate, played him. You got him? What's your first name? What's your first name?
Covert surveillance uncovered his chilling plans to target iconic landmarks like New Scotland Yard and MI6 headquarters. Nice! Another one, another nice. He admitted involvement in IEDs in Afghanistan, even bragging he detonated more than 300 devices, although he later backtracked, giving evidence. Ali went on to claim he had been held captive by the Taliban and forced to make bombs. Oh, another knife. No, Third knife. In a quiet neighborhood, under the gentle sunlight, a group of police officers walk up to a man's house, making their purpose unclear. With each knock on the door, tension builds up in the atmosphere. Hey, listen to us. Walk towards me. Walk towards me. Yep, you keep coming. Don't grab it. Don't grab nothing. Just come on. Just come on. As the situation went on, a surprising revelation came to light. A 17-year-old Russell Antonio Rousson Jr. stood at the center of it all. But this was just the tip of the iceberg. What led to this moment? Behind your shirt, behind your head, grab your shirt collar, lift your shirt up so we can see that there's nothing in your waistband. Can you pull it up a little higher? There you go. Turn around in a circle, slowly. The authorities pieced together the puzzle meticulously. Clues emerged, pointing towards the young man's involvement in an attempted murder case. Detectives identified Rousson as the suspect, and the Flagler County Sheriff's Office arrested him. Well, I don't want to... Can you grab... All right, walk back here from... Is that a fresh tattoo? All right, grab up here. Police apprehended a group of robbers, including RV Mike 3085, after a chase in Dallas. They were responsible for over 40 business robberies in the city. The latest arrest followed a robbery at an East Led Better Drive cell phone store. Body cam footage shows the takedown of the suspects. Dallas police announced the capture of four robbery crews involved in multiple crimes across the city. Intoxicated passengers were removed from Tampa International Airport after causing disruptions. They faced fines, arrest, and potential bans from flying. We're trying not to put you in jail. We're trying to get you out of here. It doesn't matter. Put your shoe on. Put your shoe on. You're intoxicated. They won't let you park. No, no, I'm good. Body camera footage captured some of these incidents. The passengers refused to cooperate and were ultimately removed by police. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. They're not going to let you fly tonight. Why are they not going to let me fly? Because they're not. But that's not fair, you know. I know my rights. Arrest me right now, then. Because, you know... They were warned about trespassing and faced consequences for their actions. I'm not sitting down. Is that a problem? It is, yeah. It's not a game. You're there to laugh and pick up your stuff and leave right now. Shut up, bro. Don't touch me, bro. In Washington on November 22nd, 2023, Seattle police aided by King County Sheriff's Office air support, pursued and caught a suspect involved in a drive-by shooting. Around 2 p.m. near 4th Avenue South and South Lucille Street, officers spotted a suspected vehicle linked to the shooting. Show me Show me the vehicle was reported stolen and linked to a burglary, and it fled at high speed when officers tried to stop it. After a chase, Officers used a pit maneuver in the 900 block of Airport Way South to stop the vehicle. They arrested the male suspect, aged 32, for investigation of drive-by shooting, eluding and possessing a stolen vehicle. A female passenger was identified and released. Multiple firearms were recovered from the vehicle and three dogs inside were unharmed. In 2001, a woman attempted to escape from Las Vegas police after stealing a Nissan. CCTV footage shows her trying to outrun the cops, but getting caught soon after.
She managed to wiggle her hands out of the handcuffs but didn't get far. The officers swiftly apprehended her, pulling her to the ground and recuffing her. Kennedy County, a human smuggler led DPS troopers on a chase. The driver and three illegal immigrants ran into the brush. The car drove to a corner and the occupants fled. However, some were captured by the authorities. They were all caught and apprehended. The smuggler's black car was stopped by cops for human trafficking. A man named Andre Galinine was arrested at Atlanta airport for exposing himself. As reported by a woman on September 27th, the incident occurred before Galinine boarded a flight to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Can you stop? No, just move up a little. When approached by police, Galanine was cooperative, but was informed about an existing warrant for his arrest. He was instructed to lean forward and was taken into custody. Police assured him that the details of the warrant would be explained at the precinct. Do me a favor, all right? Lean forward a little bit. Yo. You got a warrant after your arrest, all right? Just lean forward, all right? We get your bag. Lean forward. Galanine was asked if he had any belongings, and officers retrieved his bag. He was then taken to the precinct for further explanation about the warrant. Step out for a second. You got anything in your pocket? No. Galanine complied and was seated inside the police car for transport to the precinct, where the warrant details would be clarified. Newly released body camera footage from the Norwood Police Department reveals officers entering an apartment where children were found padlocked inside. Officers called out to the two girls through the door, but no one answered, so an officer cut the padlock. <laughs> Police! You guys in here? The apartment's owner, Nicole Jones, faces charges of endangering children. A caseworker initially alerted the police about the situation. Upon arrival, officers discovered a padlock on the apartment door. They attempted to communicate with the children inside, but received no response. ...while talking on her phone. They couldn't go with me. I just left Section 8, so that's why my lock was on the door. I did not know this lady was coming. Mm -hmm. Why is it on the outside door? Eventually, one of the children opened the door and officers found them in distress. Nicole Jones arrived later and was arrested by the police. I'm sorry, y'all. According to the police video, the children's grandmother and aunt arrived to take care of them. Nicole Jones was released from jail and has a court hearing scheduled. The children's grandmother and aunt were called to take care of them. Nicole Jones was subsequently released from custody. On a sunny morning, Police arrived at Darren Pencil's door to arrest him for brutally stabbing Lee Pomeroy 18 times on a train. Jimmy, ask the police. Stay where you are at the moment, listen to my instructions. I want you to walk towards the door. Pencil attacked Pomeroy while he was with his son on January 4th. Before the assault, Pencil had a confrontation with them. He even told his girlfriend about his plan to kill Pomeroy. During the attack, he pulled out a knife from his pocket and inflicted fatal injuries. Pensila, known for violence, had ties to the South Man Syndicate gang and had previous weapon convictions. Despite being diagnosed with schizophrenia, he didn't take medication, relying heavily on cannabis. Today, he received a life sentence with a minimum of 28 years in prison. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, during a traffic stop in Del Rio, a DPS trooper found 10 illegal immigrants being smuggled into the United States. The trooper stopped a box truck along Highway 77 for a traffic violation. Upon inspection, they discovered the immigrants inside the truck. The driver was charged with smuggling persons and all 10 immigrants were referred to USBP. 
The trooper explained the reason for the stop and asked about the truck's contents. Go to Del Rio, pick it up. So you're empty right now? Yeah, I'm Okay, in. all right. So you don't have, you know, this is a big drug traffic corridor, human smuggling uh, and all that. I've you don't have none of that here. stuff in there, do you? Yeah, I've never the driver mentioned picking up freight and pallets in Del Rio. The trooper mentioned the area's history of drug trafficking and human smuggling. Make sure you carry your license with you in the future, okay? Oh man, no good. All right, go ahead and place your hands behind your back for me. The driver consented to opening the truck for inspection. Following the discovery, the driver was detained. A man, identified as Khan Arslan, was apprehended by police after allegedly stabbing his neighbor, Matthew Borman, multiple times. The incident was captured on video and shown to jurors at Bristol Crown Court. In the footage, Arslan can be seen laughing and confessing to the murder, claiming he warned the police about his intent to kill. He is dead, isn't he? I warned you because he's one year. Look, it happened. He mentions being in special forces and threatens the officers, stating there is a bounty on their heads. Arslan also expresses concern about his arthritis while being handcuffed. Right, are you happy to tell me your name now? I think I know what it is, but you haven't actually told me. What's your name, please? I'm going to search you. Okay. So what we're searching you for... Further details revealed that Arslan boasted about his military experience and the number of people he claimed to have killed. A blue snap. All right, well, she doesn't want you here. All right? I'll go. All right, where, where are you going to go? You're not allowed to... Where are you going to go? A person was found in a car without keys, trying to take a nap. When the alarm went off, they asked why it was turned on, mentioning they had belongings in the car. They were told it was not their car, but Sarah's, and she didn't want them there. Car. Get out of the car. I'm not reversing you. I'm trying to get out, get out of the car. Get out of the car, now. I'm trying to get out. You'll be in there. They decided to leave and were offered a ride, but declined, preferring to walk. The officers repeatedly asked them to get out of the car, and after some hesitation, they eventually complied. The person asked for their phone, but was told to wait. If I was only able to stand up, yep, hang up me up. We will find her arrest. You got another set. The situation escalated, and the person was arrested by the Columbus Division of Police in Ohio. The video on the channel exclusively shows officers from that division. Love and Hip Hop star Jocelyn Hernandez was captured on body cam punching and using slurs at cops during her arrest in Sunrise, Florida. On June 12th, the incident occurred after a brawl with reality star Big Lex at a venue where the Floyd Mayweather vs. John Gotti three fight was happening. She faced charges of battery, trespassing, and resisting an officer with violence. During the arrest, officers were seen handling the situation, urging Hernandez and others to cooperate. They escorted her away and called for additional support to manage the scene. Hernandez was eventually taken into custody and the officers ensured safety and order during the process. The video footage shows the intense moments of the arrest, highlighting the challenges faced by law enforcement in handling such situations with professionalism and control. You you I got it. You 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 Dwayne Keffy D. Davis was arrested outside Las Vegas for the 1996 murder of Tupac Shakur, but remained mostly silent during the arrest. Police body camera footage showed Davis acknowledging the seriousness of the case. He was arrested in September near his home after being a long-known suspect and admitting his role in interviews and a memoir. Just take your steps. I'll get you out of those in a second. Davis, 60, hasn't entered a plea and declined media interviews from jail. His lawyer had no comment. Police allege Davis orchestrated Shakur's killing by providing a gun to his nephew, who later died. Davis's court appearance was postponed and he's scheduled for another hearing in October. On a busy road, Cumbria police quickly move in, blocking passing cars. They're after a black Audi Q7 with Joseph Piers and James Witham inside. Piers is surprised and gets handcuffed, 
murmuring about suspicion of murder. Witham remains composed, smoking, until he too gets arrested. He attempts to give a false name but doesn't succeed in getting away. What's your name, fella? Francis. Say that again. Francis Kelly. Gary. Francis. Gary Francis. Francis Kelly. Francis Gary. Francis Kelly. Right. As they're taken away, you can feel the tension building around. They exchange words, though they are not audible, but they are suspicious. There's a sense that there's more to their connection. Then, the people prosecuting tell a complicated story about betrayal at Glastonbury Festival. We start to understand why Ashley Dale died. You shouldn't. No. Anything in the vehicle that you shouldn't be. Yeah, James. Right, okay, you're under arrest for a suspicion of murder. All right. Yeah. As the trial approaches, the truth stays hidden. People deny things and blame each other, but there's a secret underneath that could make things right for Ashley and her family. Yeah, what about that side? Just think, driver, out that side. Yeah, no bother. Just open the door for us, okay, until we confirm your identity. And we'll put you in handcuffs. What's your name? Ohio police chased and arrested three high schoolers for allegedly bringing guns to school on September 14th. Body cam footage from the Cleveland Police Department shows the suspects fleeing on foot after being confronted at the school. The incident began when a security guard reported teens with guns and masks arriving in three cars. The video shows the police chase with officers shouting commands and eventually apprehending the suspects. The teens were read their rights and taken into custody. All right, go on. Where are the cars? Where the other two going to school? What's the description of the guys? I got my cuff somewhere along. I did too. One suspect mentioned dropping a cuff, and officers discussed putting it in a car until backup arrived. The police mentioned previous incidents involving these teens, including reckless driving and theft. So we do? We don't have enough to go. Right. There's four, we have three. There's four total. One, one, two. On August 28th, 2022, DPS troopers stopped a motorhome on US 90 in Del Rio during Operation Lone Star. Permission to search it? I mean, it's not mine. I don't mind, but you're being asked to the next area. You're the, you're the driver, so I need oh, yeah. your permission. Oh, well, I don't mind. They found that the driver and passenger were smuggling 14 illegal immigrants. Both were arrested and charged with smuggling of persons. It's loaded. Hey, it's loaded. You're under arrest for human smuggling, and you're under arrest for human smuggling. One moment, though. The 14 immigrants were referred to the U.S. Border Patrol for further processing. Troopers requested permission to search the vehicle, and upon discovering the immigrants, they arrested the driver and passenger for human smuggling. The troopers coordinated with Border Patrol for handling the situation and securing the immigrants. An 11-year-old girl was arrested after falsely reporting an abduction via text to 911. Talk to your parents. We can open the window and let you talk to them. Nothing's going to happen to you. Do you understand that? Okay. I'm telling you this right now. You're going to take this as a letter. The sheriff's office released body camera footage showing deputies talking to the girl, reassuring her and advising her to stay calm and talk to her parents. I'm going to take this as a lesson at 11 years old that if you do something stupid in the future, you're going to enjoy those cuffs. I'm not going to do this again. You know, this is going to be an opportunity for you to turn this into... They warned her about the seriousness of her actions, telling her it could have consequences in the future. The deputies emphasized that this experience should be a lesson for her and encouraged her to learn from it. It's going to be an opportunity for you to turn this into a learning experience. This is not something you're going to carry with you for the rest of your life, okay? The girl was reminded that mistakes made at a young age can impact her life, and they hoped she would turn this into a learning opportunity. David Boyd was arrested after being found guilty of murdering Nikki Allen over 30 years ago. No, no, from uh, the police, come over. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Do us a favor and just knock the telly off for a second. The police released body cam footage of the arrest. Nikki Allen was seven years old when she disappeared in October 1992. During the arrest, officers informed Boyd that he was being arrested on suspicion of the offence. They advised him of his rights and cautioned him about speaking without legal counsel. So I'm arresting you on suspicion, okay, of that offence. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defense if you do not mention, when questioned, 
something which you later line in court. Anything you do, see. Boyd was taken into custody following the court's guilty verdict on May 12th. The footage showed the moment of arrest, with officers asking Boyd to cooperate and leave his phone behind. Never had a drink before, and 10 being so sloshed you can't walk home. On that scale, where do you think you are? A four? Okay, that's reasonable. All right, what I want you to do is have... Police found a drunk driver with a loaded firearm in their vehicle after observing the vehicle stopped in the middle of the road. The officers approached and spoke with the driver, who mentioned having had two beers at a casino. Let your, let, let, let's, let, let's start this over, okay? We're going to start this over clean slate. It's going to be 100% honesty, because honesty goes a long way with me, right? Two right. I swear to God. Two beers. The driver appeared confused and mentioned getting off the wrong exit. The officers conducted field sobriety tests, but decided to detain the driver due to their level of intoxication. Watch the tip of the finger, nothing else. You right, man? All right, step away from the car. Step away from the car. Step away. Stop! Stop! Stay there. Florida deputies arrested 18-year-old Brian Holmes for allegedly shooting at a woman's car seven times during a road rage incident. The Volusia Sheriff's Office conducted the arrest, where a deputy criticized Holmes, calling him a freaking idiot. The woman wasn't harmed during the incident. Holmes was stopped by deputies, instructed to step out of the car, and checked for weapons. He was then placed against the car, and later put into a police vehicle. Uh, can you get him ran in the car, just talk to him real quick? Yeah, that's the him. Deputies also verified the serial number of a firearm found during the arrest. The arrest stemmed from a road rage altercation, where Holmes allegedly fired shots at the woman's car. The Kent police officer's body cameras captured the tension as they approached Anthony Collins' home on Chatham Hill. They knocked, announcing a serious matter they needed to discuss. Sorry. Collins, appearing surprised and anxious, asked for details. The officers, keeping information vague, hinted at his potential involvement in a serious offence. Collins demanded clarity, growing desperate. Can you say name for me? Collins. Okay, do you know why we're here? No, sir, don't know. Right, take a seat. Sit out for me, please. Yes, yes. No Tony, at this point in time, you are under... Sensing the severity, the lead officer declared his arrest, leading to protests. No, of course, sir. Okay, bear with a second. We'll give you the exact details. Yeah, but if you could explain to them. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm talking to you. I'm yeah, telling you. No, no, you're right. Yeah, okay. Lovely. Uh, You're looking at 19-year-old Michael Moore. What's going on? I'm okay. He's autistic and about to have an encounter with Graham police take a very bad turn. In a quiet neighborhood, a 911 call reports Michael Moore, 19, throwing rocks. Body camera footage shows an officer arriving and approaching Moore. Handcuffs on my... Put your hands behind your back. I'm sorry. Michael is taken to the ground and... St Tension rises as Moore's behavior escalates leading to a confrontation and use of force. The footage shows Moore being taken down and stunned by a taser. Facial and eye injuries, these photos were snapped at the hospital. You have come too, baby. His family maintains if officers had simply knocked at their front door. Uh, here we go, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna take the first right turn and watch you come into the complex. Yeah, the first right turn is gonna be in the parking lot. Oh, oh, sorry, the complex. In a busy city, a group gathers eagerly. Amid quick instructions, love is expressed and actions begin. Hey, move, move, move! I got you, I got you. Driver's on, driver's on! Commands for speed are heard as they move toward a common goal. Suddenly, tension rises as urgency takes over. Hey, hey, see if you caught it! Come on! Come on! Get on the fucking... One more, one more! The climax arrives with a chilling revelation. Two suspects, including Willie Dennis, 19, are arrested. For what? I'm not it's sure. for voter stuff, man. For voters. It's, it's uh, what it is. It, I think the agents with FDLE talked to you last week about... In a quiet place, Tony Patterson is surprised by police officers who inform him about a warrant for voter fraud. He sounds confused as he tries to understand the charges. What? So, uh, yes, sir. So, unfortunately, right now, we're going to have to take you to jail 
but you're get, you got a bond right away. You don't have to go to first appearance, nothing like that. The officers mentioned felony charges, but also mentioned a reduced bond of $500, giving him some hope. Tony expresses frustration and wonders why this is happening to him. Sir, what our understanding of a bond is, because of your sex offender status, you're not supposed to be voting. You don't have a as they prepare to take him into custody, the officers ask about his belongings and keys. In a quiet neighborhood, officers respond to a call about Luke, a tall four-year-old in diapers. And they're looking for, they yell multiple commands, and all they know is he's ignoring every one of them. Get on your stomach, dude! Get on your stomach! I don't want to do it again! What? They urgently instruct him to comply, but the situation escalates to using a taser, causing distress. Luke's family arrives, shocked to see him on the ground. He's lovable. Hands behind your back. Put your hands behind your back. Lewis normally does not wander far from home, but on this day... He the Eustace police chief defends the officer's actions due to limited information. Luke's mother expresses disbelief and sorrow, highlighting Luke's communication challenges. Based on the knowledge they had at the time, had they known this was a severely autistic person, I doubt any force would have been used. I think they did everything right. Uh, Hurt him, buddy. Oh, you don't trust police officers. Yeah. You, want, you say you want to hurt somebody. Oh, I have no choice. Oh. Okay, I know the right from wrong, but I know what's yeah. wrong, what's not. Well, we're, we're not going to hurt On a peaceful street, officers approach Michael, noticing tension. They assure him and suggest medical help. It's okay, we'll just make sure you have no weapons on you, okay, brother? I'll do that. We'll do that. We're not going to, I'm not going to hurt you or anything, all right? Yep. Yeah. Let's put oh. your... During a pat-down, they find something alarming and ask about it urgently. They prepare to take him quickly. Well, you're grinding your teeth like crazy. Yeah. The officer's calm urgency suggests more to the situation, creating anticipation. In a calm neighborhood, officers arrive at a home with a warrant, causing shock. They explain the situation to provide clarity. Tony Patterson's reaction reflects widespread confusion. Tony, ma'am, you have a warrant? Okay. The no, warrant. No. Listen, hold on, listen. I know you're, you caught off guard, I understand. Right? So you have a warrant, it's for voter fraud, okay? The narrative broadens to show state actions against election crimes tied to Governor Ron DeSantis's actions. Back out. Okay. Back out right back. But you have a warrant. And it's from FDLE, okay? Okay. All right. So I know you're caught off guard. But, unfortunately, At Thompson Ranch Elementary School, chaos erupts with an armed intruder reported. Police rush in with sirens blaring as worried families seek reassurance. Responded to the school within two minutes. Police! 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 Police department! First responders checked the outside of the school where the... Officials work to calm them, highlighting school security. Tensions rise when Victor Castaneda reveals a hidden handgun swiftly handled by officers. Castaneda and Jonathan Vincent Davis face charges amidst the commotion. As things calm down, lingering questions remain about the incident and safety protocols. Hazed. Officials with the El Mirage Police Department say the incident is still under investigation, but that cast in the heart of Miami, chaos erupts as police pursue Marina through city streets with a child. The news anchor reports the disturbing scene, highlighting Marina's presence with her three-year-old nephew. Talk to me. What's going on? How, how old is your son? Yeah, let's talk. Come on. Why are you guys jumping? I just want to talk. Let's talk. Where are you guys are going to go? Cornered, Marina takes a drastic plunge into the water, accompanied by the child's cries captured on camera. Urgent movements follow as officers act on emerging details from the arrest report, leading to Marina's confinement with pending charges of child abuse and a significant bond. Cops, after destroying lights in a nearby park, police say she takes off her clothes, decides to jump into the water with a child. The child's crying, listen. Outside the police department, a somber aura prevails, reflecting on the night's tumultuous events. Unanswered questions linger about Marina's motivations and the child's future amidst the chaos. Whitney urgently called 911 for a man claiming a stabbing at Eldon and West Broad Street. 
What's up, buddy? Okay, come over here. Come over to the front of my car. When I too, I got him at Richardson and Broad. The dispatcher probed for details as the sirens grew closer. Officers arrived, directing the man named Shannon. Hey. She keeps telling me my heart. What are you talking about, man? Come over to the front of my car. I, knew... I, think, I think it's not a real 14. I knew what I... Amidst uncertainty, cooperation emerged, and the ambulance left, bringing relief. The night calmed, showing human resilience with whispers of empathy lingering. What's that? Somebody's paranoid. Well, he thinks it's voodoo. <laughs> Carmel. I'll go down with it.